So we've got a service call on a water leak coming from a Hoshizaki machine. We've got a nice little pan there. So this is why. Nice ice stuff evaporator. So in this situation, the first thing that we're going to do is put the unit into, we're going to turn it off and put it into a wash cycle. I just find the wash cycle the easiest to test the bin stat because you're not playing with the compressors on and off. So now we're going to test the bin thermostat. We do so by pushing it into a pan of ice and counting how long it takes to turn off. So that one took 22 seconds for the first, but I usually ignore the first. Eight seconds to turn back on, so now we're going to test it again. That one took 40 seconds to turn off. Six seconds to turn on. Okay, so to defrost this, I might find the easiest way myself is put it into the wash mode, flip your cleaning valve to a straight up and down position so it's putting water through the, the inlet tube also, and then just spray hot water in there. While it's still running the pump, spray hot water in the drain pan, just like that. And you're gonna let the pump do the work for you. So this is from the top looking down. I want you guys to see what a freeze up does. So that's your evaporator down there. See, that's what it should look like with no ice on it. But, see over here, it's backed all the way up. There's a couple things that cause freeze-ups. The biggest issues are low water pressure coming into the machine and bad bin thermostats. Those are the biggest things that cause freeze-ups. Um, other things that I see too is depending on the style of machine, people not putting the extension brackets on the bin stats. Um, yeah, but my two most common issues are low water pressure coming into the machine. Uh, basically, when it's in a harvest mode, there's not enough water coming in, gallons per minute. I shouldn't say water pressure per se, it's, it's not enough water flow. So you don't have the right gallons per minute. It doesn't, because it uses defrost and water on these older machines to, uh, to defrost the, or to melt the ice off. So if there's not enough water coming in, the defrost alone sometimes won't get all the ice off. But there's things we can do. We can extend harvest times and different stuff. One thing I don't like though, is that doesn't look like a big enough water line coming into here. I believe that we need, I believe on a 1600 pound machine off the top of my head, I think we need a half inch uh, water line ID coming into this machine, but I'll verify that with the manual right now. That right there is like probably a quarter inch connection. Like it throttles down at the end of the hose quarter inch and it might be three eighths ID on the inside of the tube, but that's definitely too small. Interesting is, is that's a, uh, a half inch water pipe connection coming in and it's reduced down to a really small but I could be wrong I'll, I'll open that up and check yeah that definitely looks suspect right there but so we're just running hot water through it letting the water pump push it up into the spray rails and letting the water drip down over the ice naturally another tip is if you can sometimes you can't but if you can pull out your uh, your cube guide and uh, that way the ice doesn't drop down on the cube guide. If you do pull the cube guide, you gotta be careful though because that ice comes down with a vengeance and it'll bust everything in here. So you gotta kinda melt it slow, use your hand to hold it up. Just be cautious, okay? Uh, just understand that when you have freeze ups as bad as this one, you're probably gonna have a busted cube guide. So you just gotta be cautious, okay? So this one, is, from the most part, looks like it's defrosted inside. Now I gotta hit the outside. I'm just gonna slowly do this. Now I'm also being cautious because there is electrical stuff over here. And there's a solenoid up there that's energized, so I put this cover on there. We're just doing it slowly so we're not getting water, but we're using the water pump to our advantage. So, so we're defrosted all the way. I'm putting the cube guide back in, but before I do, I pulled this uh, side cube guide out and cleaned behind it because it was kind of difficult. You know, you kind of want to do things efficiently if you have the ability to, to pull something out because you have all the water out or whatever, go for it. 
I'm not doing a crazy cleaning on this machine, but you know, I can pull it out and get the slime off while I was waiting for this unit to drain. So I drained the sump out. I'm gonna put the cube guide back in right now. And then we'll turn it on. And when and if you're working on these machines, this is your check valve or your pump out spring. I'm gonna pull this off and look inside. See that sediment? That's your worst enemy. That causes the pump out spring to get stuck open and the machine will run out of water early and do a premature harvest. Um, that's not what the problem we're running into right now, but because I had it open and drained, I was checking it, so. Always inspect your cube guide for any broken pieces or cracked pieces. Look at it really carefully because sometimes it's hard to see them. Those cracked pieces will get lodged in the water pump and ruin the water pump, worst case scenario. So you want to be cautious about that. So before I'm putting it back together, this one looks good, but I just inspect it thoroughly. It is very important that you get this cube guide back in there correctly. If you look up there, on this edge right here, there's a ridge. That can't be on this side because the ice slides off into the bin. See on this side, this thing sits on that lip all the way down. Gotta make sure it's nice and secure. And it should not go anywhere. It, it holds itself in place if it's put in there correctly gotten service calls where we put the machines back together wrong and this is slid down and ice is everywhere it's a mess so got to make sure you put these back together the way you took them apart I shouldn't say that you got to make sure you put them back together the right way it doesn't matter how you took it apart you need to make sure that you put it back together right I want to point something out one of the more common places that gets neglected when people are cleaning is this tube right here see the stuff inside there and it's this valve and this up here okay um, you always want to be cautious about checking those and make sure that when you're doing a cleaning that you pull this tube off and inspect it. So we're going to rinse that out. The machine itself looks really clean, but I'm noticing that in the common places where people forget it's still dirty. And we've yet, before we start it up too, we'll pull these spray rails and inspect them. These spray rails are actually pretty dirty. You see this dark discoloration in here? And then down towards the end, they're pretty bad. You can see pieces of an old cube guide in there. So we're going to get that all cleaned out. Look at that things are pretty dirty look at those so we'll get them all rinsed up and cleaned out so if your machines have these caps you need to take these caps out and clean out that way so I pulled this off just to look at it and it looks like they might get three eighths out of that it's definitely not a quarter inch line it's more like five sixteenths inside to be honest with you but it, you know, Hoshizaki recommends certain line sizes, but uh, the gallons per minute kind of supersedes that. So we'll have to do a test to make sure that this machine is filling up at the right gallons per minute. I mean, it does throttle down in there a little bit though, down towards the end. It's hard for you guys to see it, but there's a little fitting in there. And it looks like it kind of chokes down to quarter inch before it comes back up to this size. So we might have a problem with these water lines. Another thing that concerns me is uh, there's a note on this machine that the evaporator was changed less than a year ago. Usually the only thing that evaporators can change for is when they're deformed or refrigerant leak. But if this thing has had a freeze up problem for a long time, it makes me wonder if I've stumbled onto a, you know, something that people haven't been able to figure out. This is a new location to me, so we'll see. See, there's that note, 2.7.18. And then there's also a note right here that says inlet valve change too. So someone's done a lot of work on this machine. But I pulled this inlet. First off, I'm gonna verify the numbers on it and I'm gonna look in the book to make sure this is the right inlet valve for this machine. And then also, it's pretty dirty too. It's important when you're cleaning these machines, you know, you check the inlet valves. So, and this is what I was talking about in there too. This one looks pretty clean, so. But you always want to inspect those to make sure they're not grotesque. So that's much better. There's still a slight discoloration right in here, but I'm going to run some ice machine cleaner through it now. Um, I use this brush. This is a Granger part number. Two Ralph Victor Frank 6. These things are badass. They get in the tubes. I can fit it right through that hole and get in there and scrape all that crap out of there. And I cleaned up these guys too. I've assembled it and I'm filling it with water. What I did was I had a completely empty sump and right when the water solenoid valve opened up, I started my stopwatch. And we're gonna see how long it takes to fill up that sump to help us figure out our gallons per minute. 
as soon as the drain on the right starts pouring water out, we know that that sump is full because that's the overflow and it's normal for it to fill up till it overflows. So that's what we want to see. We want to see the water flowing out of that pipe. And it took just shy of four minutes. So now we can do a calculation based off of how much water this sump holds. I'll look through the book and find out. After I'm all done, I'm going to use a sanitizer and you're going to follow the instructions on the sanitizer to sanitize all the surfaces that your hands touched. And I ran it through, uh, I've let it run, and now I'm gonna go ahead and drain it out. So at this point, I started a timer, waited for the five minute mark, found that my pressures were 47,205. Hoshizaki looks at the five minute mark and tells me the pressures. We're dropping stuff. We're running right about 80 degrees, so my pressures aren't too bad. Another thing is that this unit should have this extension bracket and it doesn't. Both of these machines should have this extension bracket, so I'm finding a bunch of problems with it. So we'll have to order up this extension bracket. This is one thing that can cause freeze ups too. Okay, so found another problem. This unit has a five gallon sump. It took 3.58 minutes to fill it. Let's round it up to four minutes. Five gallons divided by four minutes, we're getting 1.25 gallons per minute water delivered to this machine. And the requirement on this machine is right up here. 2.91 gallons per minute required water flow, uh, water flow rate. So the water flow is not good enough. Whether or not it's a bad water solenoid valve or it's that water line restricting it, that's another problem too that will cause a freeze up. So this machine so far has got an issue with the bin stat, it needs the extension bracket, it has bad water flow coming into it, and then now I'm going to verify if the water valve that's in it is correct because it has been replaced by the previous company. This was my total cycle. We had a 27 minute freeze cycle and a three and a half minute harvest cycle. That doesn't sound unheard of, it seems decent. I caught all the ice, so I'm going to weigh it just to do a production check. I'm not worried about the uh, production of the machine. I believe it's producing fine. It's just a freeze-up issue. So, we'll see. We're going to keep going. Okay, it's always very, very important that we make sure we're getting our parts from Hoshizaki. And if we're not, making sure ourselves that the part numbers are correct. The water valve that is in this machine is a J248033. That water valve is for an 830 pound machine. We should have the J248032. So this unit has the wrong water valve in it. Now, I need to call Hoshizaki to find out for sure if the flow rate is wrong for these two. But I would think that it would be because they would have, if it was, you know, we'll find out if it's worse or better. Okay. I ended up having the water valve, the correct one, that's the bad one. And here's what we had before. We were getting 1.25 gallons per minute out of that water valve. When I changed mine, now I'm getting 2.12 gallons per minute. So that's a lot better. It's still not correct though. We need 2.91 gallons per minute for this machine to work correctly. So now that we know we have the right water valve in there, we're gonna start addressing the water line issues coming into the machine. Okay, I'm not completing this today. Um, what I did temporarily until I can get approvals, I'm going to order the bin stat and the bin stat bracket and then we'll come back and fix the water line issue too. But I adjusted the circuit board to make for a longer defrost to ensure that we get all the ice off of it. I do not ever suggest adjusting a Hoshizaki circuit board unless you've consulted the factory or you absolutely know what you're doing. Okay, that's why I'm not even going to show it, but um, you can read the manual, it tells you how to do it. So that's what I did for now to ensure that I had a super long defrost to make sure that we melted off any ice off of this guy. And this is pretty much going to be it. We're going to order the parts. All right, guys. So this one was a little bit longer of a video, um, but I kind of felt like I showed what I needed to show. I tried to cut it down as much as possible. Hoshizaki ice machines, they can take a little while to troubleshoot, okay? You got to follow the steps. This was a freeze-up, so, you know, freeze-ups take a while themselves just to defrost without ruining the whole machine. If you defrost that ice too fast, it'll drop down out of the evaporator and destroy the cube guides and all the parts in the bottom. So you just got to take your time. And that's why in the video I showed how I like to just let the water pump do the work 
while adding hot water to the sump. And I feel like you get it actually works faster that way, but it's a little bit smoother instead of just melting the ice with the hot water hose. So as you guys saw too, it's pretty common. I shouldn't say it's pretty common. I've run into it a few times where freeze up problems end up being installation problems. Okay. This machine never had the right water line from day one. Okay. That water line's too small. And then on top of that, somewhere along the lines, the previous company to me installed the wrong water inlet valve on this machine. So that, you know, affected the water flow coming into the machine also. And you guys saw I had the water valve, so I went ahead and replaced that. But I'm going to have to get a plumber in there to change that angle stop valve coming out of the wall. And then we'll correct the water line size going to the machine. Okay. I'm um, also recommending, like I said in the video, that we replace the bin thermostat. Okay. And we also put that extension bracket that I pointed out from the book onto that uh, bin thermostat. And we'll put that extension bracket on the left side machine too. It's very um, important that you put those extension brackets on there because they've since realized that when you drop you know, that whole evaporator full of ice on top of there that the ice can still back up into the machine. And if you guys don't understand, that bin thermostat is essentially just a temperature controller. And when the ice gets close enough to it, it opens and shuts the machine off, okay? So bad bin thermostat, bad water inlet valve, water line sized incorrectly coming into the machine, all of those things led up to this thing freezing up the way that it had. And I bet you anything, I wasn't the service company that changed that evaporator, but I bet you anything that that evaporator didn't need to be changed in the first place had the machine had the right size water line coming into it. You'd be surprised what, uh, you know, a little bit of a size, in, you know, um, how much an incorrectly sized water line coming into that machine will affect these Hoshizaki machines. They really rely on that fresh water coming in to help uh, break that uh, vacuum that the ice cubes get su uh, stuck to the evaporator, basically. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll try to get some follow-up video when I do the repairs on the machine. But, you know, I felt like I uh, showed what I needed to show on this, and hopefully you guys got something from it, okay? Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. Right now, you should see some other channels popping up. I suggest you give those channels a shot. Leave me some feedback down in the comments, and we will see you guys on the next one, okay? Thanks a lot.